Hi, welcome back and congratulations for making it this far. I'm so happy that you made it. Now, before we go any further, you need to understand a couple of things. First is what is a class in OOP and what is OOP? Well, OOP means Object Oriented Programming and a class is just a blueprint, a definition or a description of something inside your program. Now, a class defines two things for this something. It defines the properties of this something. It defines the methods. The properties could be variables, arrays, or any type of data. For the methods, we have functions that create behaviors for this thing that, is, that the class is describing. Now, so a class describes what exactly? What is it, this thing that you are talking about, Edwin, and you're not telling me? An object. All right? And an object is just a group of data put together by a common theme. An object could be a variable. It could be a function. It could be any data structure inside your program. I know it could be a, a little confusing, all right? But let me just give you a couple of examples, actually one example of an object. Let's say, for example, we have a car object, all right? For this car, and now keep in mind that the objects in programming are very similar to the objects that we have outside on the real world. So for this car object, we are going to define some properties. Let's say and methods. Let's say we have for this car, a property could be wheels, the wheels of the car, right? It could be the seats. That could be a property. What about the radio? That could be a property. I mean, the car has thousands of pieces, right? We can have a lot of properties for this car. And just to give an example of the methods or the functions or the behaviors, right? They all mean the same. We have the wheels. Let's say we move the wheel. That could be a method of this object. Uh, move the seats. Right? That could be one if you have one of those cars that have electric seats. That could be one. What about turn on the radio? That also could be a method, a function, a behavior of that car. All right? The benefits, the benefits of using OOP or object-oriented programming are many. It provides code organization. It provides less complex uh, you know, functionality. Well, not functionality. More complex functionality with less complex code. All right, we have more interaction within our code easily if we wanted to. We're, we're methods, you know, and properties. You know, our code would be more modular, meaning we can change objects or groups, you know, within our code without affecting other pieces of code in our program, right? I mean, the benefits are many. If Let's say, for example, we have, we have a company, right? And this company, we have a lot of programmers working in a project. We could have each programmer work in a different object of that program and none of the programs or none of the objects will conflict with the main program you see i mean we could separate our program into little objects we have the we could have the form object we could have the navigation object we could have the header object the footer object and we can have many different people working on those modular pieces or objects and you know they would never affect each other Knowing object-oriented programming is a benefit. And on this course here, I'm going to introduce you to it, and I'm going to explain a couple of things to it. We're going to be using it a little bit on this section here. But I want you to grab the major idea on what it is, so that way you are more prepared to start coding in object-oriented programming. All right? It's going to be super easy the way I explain it, and then hopefully you understand it. If not, for some reason, you have a question, I'm here 24-7. You can email me. You can contact me and I can show you the way, all right? But anyway, I want to thank you. And again, congratulations for making it this far. You're going to love this section. And I'll see you in the next lecture. Take care.